I have 1.3 million subscribers and I don't say that in any way to boast, I don't say that in any way to be arrogant, I actually find that really terrifying because right now there are 1.3 million people who the Lord has entrusted to me and I want you all to know the truth. Why am I making this video? Do you remember when Judas betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ and Jesus said, one of you tonight will betray me. What did all the disciples do? They said, is it me Lord? Am I the one who's going to betray you? In other words, they were examining themselves. In other words, they were testing themselves. In other words, they sort of doubted, could I be the one who would forsake the Lord? And I want to ask every single one of you, and myself included, do we really know the Lord? You've probably heard the most terrifying verse in the Bible as it's been popularly named, and it's this verse. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not do this and that? And I will say to them, depart from me, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. And I believe there are many Christians who talk the talk. There are many Christians, perhaps this could even be for me myself, that have a million subscribers. Yes, we know how to get a million subscribers, but we know how to do ministry. We know the right theology. We know the right answers. We know how to preach the gospel. I've led many souls to Christ, but do we know the Savior himself? And that is a question I, I plead with you right literally now. I beg you right now to ask yourself, do you know the Lord? Do you know him personally? We've all met those couples who, they spend a lot of time with other people, they spend a lot of time on their careers, but when it's just them two together, alone, they have awkward silences. They don't know how to connect because they don't know each other. And really, that's the question I'm asking you right now. Do you know Jesus Christ? Is the Spirit of God inside of you right now and there's a yearning to be nearer to Him? There's a yearning to be close to Him? Or is your Christianity made up of watching YouTube videos, Instagram reels and spending time with Christians in church? Because the reality is this, and I'm not judging anyone, but I do want to say this very honestly. I meet people on the streets and they come up to me and they say they, they watch my videos and if that's you, I don't want you to be suddenly really anxious thinking, is he talking about me? I'm just speaking very broadly right now. But when they speak to me and I hear about their lifestyle and I hear words that come out of their mouth, I wonder, is there a desire for holiness? When I look at my own life, Something has crept up on me that would probably be the biggest sin I'm committing right now. And it's just total procrastination, total wasting my time on social media. I remember a couple of years ago when I didn't have any internet connection in my house. I used to film my videos in my office and then I used to go to a place called Costa Coffee, a coffee shop. And there I would use their Wi-Fi to post the videos online. And back then, I didn't fritter my time on social media. Back then, I used to spend hours alone alone with the Lord, praying, fasting, reading the word. But now, social media has got a grip of me. And my time, if you looked at what I spend the most time on, it would be very clear that there is a lot more time spent on social media, watching trash videos, watching pranks, watching be things that the Lord actually hates and being entertained by it. And you watch my videos. I preach often, the end could be any day now. The Lord Jesus Christ will return in the twinkling of an eye. And yet am I living my life like I believe Jesus could return at any day? Or am I living my life like I'm settling into this earth? Earth. and this earth is all that we live for because this earth is my treasure. Charles Spurgeon, the Prince of Preachers, used to say that he would have four tests where he would examine himself every year to test whether he's in the faith and that is a biblical principle. The Bible says examine yourself and really if Charles Spurgeon, again I'm not judging anyone, it's not for me to say I'm no authority, but I would say that Charles Spurgeon was a true born-again believer. I really do believe that man loved the Lord and yet if he was willing to examine himself, should you and I not also be doing these tests? Again, why am I saying this? I will have people on Instagram who follow me and say, oh I love this man's videos or amen brother. You click on their profile and then they have a, a Bible verse in their bio. You do a bit of scrolling and I don't say this to embarrass anyone but, but the pictures that you see on their Instagram 
Those pictures would be, if you like, wild enough that when I was a young boy growing up, when we used to go into magazine shops, you'd have sort of the wildlife magazines, the sport magazines, the football magazines, and then on the top shelf, you had magazines that were rude, and they were so rude that they would put a filter over those magazines so you couldn't see them. And actually, some of the images on people who are professing to be Christians, those images could quite easily go on the magazines that would be in those stores. Guys, Again, I'm not judging you. I'm just asking you because I feel the Lord would want me to say this right now. Is there a desire for holiness? Is there a desire to be like the Lord Jesus Christ? I read in the comment boxes people saying, OMG. And you know that that is breaking one of the Ten Commandments. Do not take the Lord's name in vain. Don't make the name of the Lord common. And if it's so easy for us to say, OMG, to, to say Jesus Christ, we've got to really check our minds? Are we using the Lord's name in reverence that when I say God Almighty, when I say Jesus Christ, when I say Yahweh, we are talking about a holy, holy name who has put breath in our lungs right now. And guys, I'm sorry if this video is not scripted, it's messy, it's incoherent. I didn't plan to make a video today, but I just think I need to say this to you right now. And I just ask, he who has ears, let him hear. Please listen to what I'm saying. If I've spoke nonsense, if I've spoken trash, just dismiss whatever I say. And I do pray, if that is the case, that the Lord will just wipe everything I said from your mind. I don't want anyone to, to, who's, who's truly saved to go away from this video anxious and worried. I just want those who perhaps believe they're saved and yet they do not know the Lord God to really come and find the Saviour who bled and died on that cross, who shed his blood, who loves you to pieces and wants you in his kingdom. I want those those people to truly find Christ, that Christ would live in them and they would know that light and darkness cannot dwell together and so we need to draw closer to the light. Not sinless perfection, we're always going to make mistakes, we'll never be the finished article in this life, but let us seek to draw near to him and draw close to him as we are in these last days. Thank you so much for listening and again I'll say forgive me if I've said anything out of order.